<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Muskegon. Whether you're here worshiping with us in person or online, we are grateful to be able to worship our God together with you. And um, a reminder, God was here before we got here. And God is the one who welcomes us just as we are, meets us right where we're at. And our prayer is you will experience God's presence and love holding you as we worship together today. Yeah. I have a couple of announcements. Um, the first announcement is that the youth group will be meeting after worship in the library. So all of you can grab a snack or a cup of coffee, or I, I don't know if you drink coffee, a cup of coffee, a glass of something, and join us in the um, library right after worship today. Um, also want to announce that we have a new staff member. So at, when Arisha left us um, last May, the personnel committee and a couple of other people from the session got together and said, began to pray and think, okay, God, where are you leading us? We've had this youth education director and we don't have that many youth. Do we need a half-time staff person working with youth only? And what the session and what the personnel committee decided was is that Yes, we surely want someone to engage our incredible youth that we have. And maybe we're being invited to consider ways that we can engage in our community more intentionally. And so they changed the job from being youth and family director to being community engagement and education director. So then we began looking for a person and had a bunch of blips and starts and this is and that's and excitements and then disappointments. And to make a long story short, God has brought a person to us that we're very excited about. His name is Adam Bell, and I'd like to introduce you to him right now. He's our new Community Engagement and Education Director. He, um, you may have seen him or heard him even, because I understand. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Come on up, Adam. Um, I could say a whole bunch more. I won't do that now. You can read about him in the newsletter and online on our website, and I know you're going to enjoy his energy and getting to know him. First thing he's going to be working on is the party at Glenside Park. He actually already had connected us with the Glenside Neighborhood Association. We had a meeting this week. So Adam, you can grab this microphone over here. And he's going to, he has an announcement about all that. Oh. So, yeah. OK, good morning. I just want to first of all uh, say thank you to the church uh, yeah. for adding me to the staff. Uh, Anne and I are very grateful. Uh, Anne is not here today. She was traveling with a, a longtime friend of hers in Colorado over the last week. She got in very late last night and um, was very excited to be here. And I just looked at her and said, you know, it's really OK, because um, it's awfully early in the morning. But so we're going to be at a Halloween party. And I know several people have signed up already. Uh, I, I would like everyone uh, to meet here. Uh, if we could, uh, if you can, if you can, uh, about 11.15. And the idea is that if we can find a key and gas, uh, we'll take the van, because I'd like to have you know, a van that has the church's name on it. Um, and we're going to be doing several things. There's a craft activity uh, that will be painting pumpkins uh, that we'll ask a couple of the volunteers to oversee. Uh, I'd like to have a prayer corner so that any of the parents or kids who or uh, who come up to our table, uh, have an opportunity to have uh, any prayer requests uh, put in and have someone to pray with. Uh, and then uh, a little merry band of actors that I, I hang out with are gonna do a little storytelling also. And that'll be a, a fun interactive part with the kids that are there. Uh, so we're all very excited about that. Uh, and also if you are able, uh, several of us are gonna go over and help set up on Friday night. So if you're on the list to sign up, I will be reaching out to you in the next couple days to see if you might be able to help with that. Um, and then we'll just fasten your seatbelts and we'll get started. Yeah, good. Thank you, Adam. Great. Thank you. Um, Mary, I know Mary has an exciting announcement. <laughs> well, we're excited about it. This is the first day you get the opportunity to paint your heart on a canvas that we're going to have the collective then combined in the hallway as the heart of SPC as part of our art exhibit. I've talked to some people who are excited. I've talked to some people who are like, oh, day. And <laughs> I couldn't possibly do that and all of that. Well, I want you to see it's this size of canvas. So this literally takes minutes. I have tried to make it as easy for everybody as possible. 
We have some templates downstairs because a heart can, you know, get a little wonky as you're trying to draw it out and paint it out and stuff. So if you want to trace something and all you got to do is fill it in with your favorite colors, but you can do flowers and squiggles and dots and lines and whatever moves your heart. The whole thing is to have it be your canvas so that when we put them all together, it becomes this collective of all of our hearts. So I hope some of you take the time this morning. We're doing it this morning, and we're also doing it next week during the consecration potluck brunch time. Come do it, get coffee, get coffee, come do it, whatever works for you. But we're right downstairs, that end, all set up, ready to go. So I hope you participate in it. Okay, thank you. Oh, I don't need I that. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and one last announcement that Mary made mention of next Sunday is Consecration Sunday. We'll be having a potluck supper after worship, um, consecrating our pledges for next year. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the on the bulletin board right across from Kathy's office. So please, if you'd like to come sign up and, and bring something, it's gonna be a great time. So, are there any other announcements? Okay, friends, we're going to worship God. We have a musical call to worship, and then we will have a spoken call to worship. Let's worship our God. Good morning, and uh, first of all, I am not Scott Stewart, but I am happy to fill in for my friend who is not available this morning. So uh, please rise as we call each other to worship. 
Make a joyful noise to the God, all the earth. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. God made us. We belong to God. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Enter God's courts with praise. Thanks to God and bless God's name. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Come, let us worship. Please remain standing as we sing together, we serve. be seated. Our call to confession. Friends, we so easily forget that we belong to God. Confession is a time when we remember once again that we do belong to God. In confession, we are invited to let go of the ways we find our belonging in the ways of the world. Let us come before our loving God, confess our sin, and remember again that we belong to God and are the sheep of God's pasture. Please pray with me the prayer of confession. Faithful God, we pray for forgiveness on this day, for choosing power over service, forgive us, for seeking glory rather than humility, forgive us for pushing ourselves to the front when our presence is needed on the sidelines forgive us help us know where we are needed and how best to serve you and your people guide us to your side that we might be by your hands of healing and compassion for a world in need in Christ's name we pray amen our declaration of forgiveness. Friends, hear the good news. The loving kindness of God never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning in life and in death and in life beyond death. We do belong to God. In Christ, you are forgiven, loved, and freed. Receive this good news and really live. You may stand and pass the peace of Christ. As a loved and forgiven people, we are at peace with God through Jesus Christ. This is good news that is meant to be shared. So keeping COVID safety protocols in mind, show a sign of this peace of Christ with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Now we will be seated for our first scripture lesson. Our first scripture lesson is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 27 through 30, and then chapter 4, verse 23. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not plan harm against your neighbor who lives trustingly beside you. Do not quarrel with anyone without cause when no harm has been done to you. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow, flow the springs of life. We will now hear, Lord, I want to be a Christian. Friends, this morning we're going to conclude a six-week sermon series we've been doing on the taglines that the session has discerned should be with our church. First Presbyterian Church in Muskegon, a place to worship, a place to belong, a place to serve. Today we're going to focus on the last of those taglines, a place to serve. And we will use the gospel text, Mark 10, verses 32 through 45. I invite you to listen for God's living word for us this day. 
they, and they here is the disciples with Jesus, they were on the road going up to Jerusalem. And Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the 12 aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, see, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left hand, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? God, we do long to be Christians in our hearts and in our hands and in our feet and in all of who we are. And so we come before you, God, and ask that you will transform us by your living word. May your word be our rule. May your spirit be our teacher. And may the glory of Jesus be our only aim. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, a woman from a church I pastored years ago told me the story of sitting in the hospital room as her mother was dying. The mother and her husband had raised five successful children, and three of them lived in town and when it became apparent that the mom was going to die, the other two were called back into town. And on one of those last days, one of the daughters from out of town came into the hospital room to say goodbye to mom. She came into her mother's bedside, thanked her, kissed her, and then said, you know, mom, I've been wanting to ask you, can I have the sterling silver and the silver tea service? No, this really happened, <laughs> the silver tea service. The mother responded, that all that was taken care of in the will and not to worry about it, but the daughter pressed one more time. And then the mother looked at all the children and said, I don't want my last days to be about this stuff. Just promise me you'll work this out nicely. Well, this text we read in Mark's gospel today is not about silver tea service, but it does at the beginning have a similar feel to it. Jesus is telling his disciples for actually the third time now that he's going to Jerusalem to die. And Jesus gives descriptions that this is not going to be an easy or a pretty death. It's going to involve mocking, spitting, torture. And right after Jesus opens up his heart to his disciples like this, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, also known as the sons of thunder, ask Jesus for some glory. They want to be seen as those in Jesus' inner circle in the kingdom when all is said and done. They want the right hand 
and they want the left hand, both sides. And when all the praising and clapping for Jesus is being done, they want to receive the overflow for themselves. Don't you wonder how it felt for Jesus, who just shared his heart about his impending death, than to have them ask for this? Even after almost three years of hanging out with Jesus, day in and day out, these men still are not getting it. They're still focused on themselves. They equate greatness with position and prestige. They equate greatness with being seen with the powerful. They equate greatness with being served. But before we get too hard on these guys, let's consider that all of us have a little bit of what we might call Zebedee DNA running in our veins as well. We too, don't we, connect greatness with resources and power and position? We in the church often measure great churches as those churches who score high in the three Bs. And you know what they are. Budgets, butts in the pews, and buildings. (laughs) So let's not be too hard on poor James and John here, even though they're kind of irritating, aren't they? Jesus tells these men that they don't know what they're asking. They don't get what glory in the kingdom is really about. They don't get the Jesus kind of greatness. He asks them if they can drink from the cup that he is going to drink and be baptized with the baptism he's going to be baptized from. He's essentially saying to them, hey guys, this is no cup of tea. There's suffering and pain involved here. There's loss and cost here. These poor men still don't get it. And they say, yeah, Jesus, we can handle all that. And not unlike the siblings of the sister I mentioned who asked for the silver on her mother's deathbed, the disciples get upset. Who are these guys to ask this question? And Jesus tells them that he is what he's been trying to tell them all along. Whoever wants to be great must be a servant. The Jesus kind of greatness is bound up in how we serve each other. One day many years ago over fried chicken and sweet tea at a church supper in Macon, Georgia, a man told me about his brother Rod, who loved baseball and loved kids. For years, Rod coached Little League, which is a religion, by the way. Baseball Little League is like a religion in the South, at least it was in Georgia. And he was an incredible coach. And his team often went to the all-star tournaments. And all the dads in the community wanted Rod to be their kid's coach because they knew they would win. One day, Rod told his brother that he felt he was getting sidetracked by needing to get his teams to the all-stars every year. And he quit as a coach and started offering batting lessons to for free for any child who would want them. He would also be available to play catch, practice fielding grounders with boys and girls alike, and he would be meeting by the batting cages every night during the week at the high school in Macon. Lots of the children showed up. He told his brother after a couple years that building the relationships and helping young men and women learn the discipline of batting and fielding is what he was called to do. It was his mission. It was what really mattered. It mattered more than the All-Star Games. There's nothing wrong with winning All-Star Championships, of course, but yet Rod learned something about the Jesus kind of greatness. Rod learned the kind of glory that is found in the trenches when no one really sees what you are doing and where you give yourself to nurture human beings as winners in a different kind of way not just winners on the field. Servanthood, this Jesus kind of greatness is tied up with our learning to be servants. And we are mentored in this kind of servanthood, not by taking our cues from the subtle or not so subtle glory seekers of the world, but we learn this kind of greatness by tending to what's in our hearts, by following Jesus, by practicing servanthood. And since servanthood doesn't come naturally, 
at least it doesn't to me, I don't think it comes naturally to most of us, it helps if we can be around some people who can help us along the way. People who can travel this path of learning servanthood together. People who can be patient with us when we fail because doing things that don't come naturally most often involves failing. People who can rejoice with us when we're transformed through service. People who can encourage us when we get tired or lose our way. And that's where the church can come in. We as Christ's followers are called to be a place to serve, a place that nurtures those who serve, and a place where we can learn more about what it means to be servants, a place where we can also practice serving. And friends, while Jesus is talking about the ultimate service here, giving up his life on the cross, if we look at Jesus' life, he spent much of his time in humble places doing simple acts of service, talking to a woman at the well, eating with the unclean, helping a leper, feeding people. Jesus had practiced a life for others his whole life before dying on the cross. And we too can learn service by doing simple acts of service in simple and ordinary times in our lives. Here's some examples. The daughter who brings dinner to her dad and sits with her mom before going home after a long day of work. The youth who takes time to talk to an older person or maybe help them with their housekeeping. The child who picks up leaves and sticks in the yard of someone who's in the hospital or maybe the child who shares their cookie with a friend. The church member who keeps meticulous minutes for meetings or the church member who shows up and fix something in the building and no one really knows they're doing those things. That happens all the time around here. The woman who makes a bowl of soup for a tired friend on a cold day. At the grocery, the one who sees the mom with the two crying children and lets them cut in front to check out. The CEO of a company who stops to pull a couple weeds from the yard of the business on the way out. The spouse who takes time to make a cup of coffee for the other, knowing that it's going to be a long day. The neighbor who takes a few minutes to shovel the snow for the elderly man next door and who does some honeydew jobs for the widow. The Democrat who prays for the person with the Republican's yard sign. The Republican who prays for the person with the Democrat yard sign. This week, the box of Halloween candy, the box out there for the Halloween candy for the bash, got filled up miraculously. People just dropping things off. Service. People giving hours of their lives to serve a funeral luncheon to people they don't know as an act of love for a grieving family. We could go on and on and on, couldn't we, about simple acts of service. I encourage all of us to cultivate a life of service by maybe adding one simple act of service to our lives each week. Something ordinary that is really extraordinary to a world that doesn't, doesn't understand the Jesus kind of greatness. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Our culture teaches us to look for greatness in who has the most money, power, and time in the spotlight. This Jesus kind of greatness comes from a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And grace and love are things that come from God. And as our hearts get filled with God's grace, the grace overflows in service to others. Don't you love that last line in Dr. King's quote, a soul generated by love? Many of you know that 
My husband Ted's sister and brother-in-law ended up in the eye of Hurricane Ian a few weeks ago. They lost power and water and had significant damage to their place. They can still live in it and they're actually doing fine. And they also had a generator. When the power was down, they were able to hook up and get power from the generator. We may wish to look today at what power is generating our hearts. What generator are we hooked up to? James and John had hearts that were generated by the need for worldly glory. The text from Proverbs that Bev read tells us to be vigilant about our hearts. And this is good advice for those of us who long to be servants. What does generate what we do in our individual lives and in our life together as a church? When we make decisions, we may wish to, wish to ask ourselves, what is generating that decision? What is in our hearts as we make decisions? Now, when I end most sermons, I like to kind of wrap them up in a, a bow and let, then take it home, right, to the end. But today, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave a bunch of ideas hanging out there for us to pray about, think about. Where do we see the Zebedee DNA in our own lives? What does it mean to serve? Who can we surround ourselves with that will help us keep learning to serve? What might be one ordinary thing we can do this week to serve someone, our spouse, our friend, our neighbor, our classmate, a stranger, our enemy? What generates our lives? So I'll leave those and other thoughts about service hanging here. And with those thoughts hanging, my prayer is that First Presbyterian Church in Muskegon can continue to be a place where we learn to serve. Let's close this sermon with the prayer of St. Francis. St. Francis lived a life of radical service for the poor. Will you pray with me, please? God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there is doubt, true faith in you. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light into the world, light into my life. 
As most of you know, we are in stewardship season right now, and each Sunday in October, we've had one of our church members come up and give a minute for stewardship, and this morning, we will hear from Kendra Mills. Come join us, Kendra. All right. Public speaking is definitely John's gift, not mine, but I will um, make this um, brief. But when I was asked um, to say a little something about why I give to this church, um, I felt like I needed to start with um, what I received from this church. Um, when I started attending First Presbyterian Church, I was a single 20-something, relatively unchurched. I went to church here and there throughout my life. And I was living in a new town um, in a brand new state. Um, and I was nudged through these doors um, by a friend who said, this is a church full of friendly people. That's what they told me. <laughs> um, so in the 22 years since I've attended, um, this church family um, has welcomed my then boyfriend into the pews. Um, and then they hosted um, a bridal shower for me, um, then followed by a baby shower. Um, and I remember when I was um, uh, had a new baby in the back, when Yuri would cry, I would quickly jump up and whisk the crying baby out of the church pews. And I think it took about two Sundays before a rocking chair um, was placed where in the chairs and with a sign that said, for new mothers. Um, so uh, I, um, I have received bags of hand-me-down clothes that belong to your grandchildren. Um, cherished books uh, that were given to us um, to read to my kids, um, toys, bikes, uh, lots of good parenting advice. Um, I've received prayer shawls, um, and I know that uh, this congregation knows that we heat with wood, so if a branch falls, um, we get a phone call that says there's a little pile of wood for us to pick up. Um, I've received a small white vase with hand-picked wildflowers that was left on our front porch 23 miles away just because. Um, and um, when I was laid off uh, as a photojournalist from the Muskegon Chronicle after 13 years, um, they didn't allow me to buy my uh, camera equipment back. Um, so an anonymous group of people donated money. Um, so I, I knew I would cry. I'm not going to cry. So that I could start my own business. Um, Oh, sorry. Um, 
so here's the thing. I, I'm quite sure I'm not like an FPC favorite or a cherished, um, but I, I really believe that this church does this to all of those that get nudged through those doors. Um, and so um, I really give a simple reason um, so that we can um, keep the lights on and a parking lot cloud and the staff paid. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm so emotional, but... Um, so I just, uh, I want these doors always to stay open so that um, we can open hearts to the type of Christian love this place offers. So, thank you. Well, who else is crying, right? <laughs> I know. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you for sharing from your heart. Um, and I also wish to thank um, our musicians this morning, Will and Gail. This is their first time with us in worship. And Havila, thank you very much. Um, you know, we don't, yeah. We clap for them not because um, we clap for performances, right? We clap for them because we give thanks to God for how they are leading us in worship. So thank you very much this morning. It's now time for us to um, pray together. And so I'm wondering if there are some joys and concerns that you would like to share for us to bring before God today. Um, I, I will mention, let's continue to pray for the Olson family and their bereavement. Oh, I, I was so proud of you yesterday, I have to tell you. This sanctuary was packed. We were expecting 50 people. I think we had 140 for the service and then for the reception downstairs afterwards. And those of you who really showed that this is a place to serve by how you just humbly took care of people's needs yesterday. Um, so thank you so much. I know it meant the world to Don, it meant the world to him and to his girls. So let's pray for the Olson family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayer requests this morning, friends. Okay. Yes, Pam. Um, the two Julies, Julie Stewart and Julie Ayers. Let's continue to pray. Is that who you mean? Yeah. Yes. Let's continue to pray for Julie Stewart and Julie Ayers and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And will you continue in prayer with me, please? Gracious God, we do ask for the grace to follow you. We ask for the grace to have souls generated by grace and love. Please continue to fill us and use us, we pray. And I pray for every person sitting in these pews or worshiping online with us today. God, you know each person and what they need. And I pray that you will meet them in that place of need. We thank you for bringing Adam Bell to us. And even though we will commission him next Sunday, we're going to pray for him this week that you will bless him and fill him with your spirit and lead him as he begins his ministry among us. We pray for our world today, God. We pray for all in leadership in our nation and in nations around this globe. We pray for a move of your spirit and a move of justice and a move of hope. We pray especially for people who are in war-torn areas, that they will know your comfort and peace, places like the Ukraine, the Congo. Mm -hmm. And even as we are embarking on an election coming up here in our country. We pray for your grace and leadership as, as we go to the polls and vote. Lead us and guide us, Lord, we pray, and give our leaders wisdom and courage. Finally, God, this morning we pray for our own pastoral nominating committee as they continue the search for a new pastor for this church. Lead them, guide them, and keep preparing us as you prepare the person who you have called to be here with us. Thank you for your love, which never lets us go, and for the Holy Spirit, in whose power we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would ask that uh, you please sign the uh, attendance pads uh, so that uh, we will get an accurate count of who comes to visit with us every Sunday, and that would be much appreciated. It's the red uh, tablets in your, uh, in your aisle there, so if you could sign those, please. We're going to uh, have a prayer for our offering. God is generous beyond measure. With thanksgiving for God's generosity in our lives, let us be generous as we offer ourselves and our resources for the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ in the world. Uh, there are offering plates in the back in the narthex, and congregants may contribute follow, following worship or contributions may be made online or through our website or be mailed in. Thank you. Our prayer of dedication. Take us as we are, O oh God. Summon out what we will be. Set your seal upon our hearts and live in us. We offer our resources and our lives to you. Help us serve you with joy and gladness. In the name of Christ, amen. Will you stand and uh, we will sing, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? a few reminders there will be coffee and other treats in the chapel if you are new and don't know where the chapel is follow the crowd around and you should be able to find it um, a reminder to the youth after you grab your snacks please join us in the library and then finally everyone please make a heart go downstairs paint a heart um, so that we can get all those hearts up 
on the wall to show the heart of First Presbyterian Church. So even if you can't paint, go. Okay. 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 Receive a benediction. May God walk in front of you to lead you. May God walk behind you to protect you. May God walk underneath you to support you. May God walk beside you as your companion and guide. Do not be afraid. The presence and love of the living God are with you always. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. There is hatred, let me bring your love. There is injury, our pardon, Lord. And where there's day through faith in you. Make me a channel.